Welcome to Pod Tendo, a Nintendo podcast where they analyze, reminisce, and replay the glory of old Nintendo games. Hey guys, welcome to the Podtendo Podcast, where we analyze, reminisce, and replay the glory of old Nintendo games. We'll be contacted on Twitter. That's probably, no, email us, podtendo at gmail.com. We're on other socials, but like Facebook, I don't know if I've been on Facebook in like 10 years. So YouTube, you might be contact us on YouTube. We're a review, pop culture, uh, retrospective, let's play show. So we're going to cover all those kind of topics. I'm your co-host, Mick, and I'm joined every episode by my lovely and talented co-host, Tyson. Cool. Awesome. We're, you know how it goes. Uh, you've listened to us, if you have listened to us in the last little while, uh, we're looking at all the X-Men movies. We were a little bit strapped for time, so we were definitely like more focused on that. Uh, new series of hours that we get to talk about podcasting, so we have lots of free time. And we find ourselves doing an experimental show. How fun. Yeah, definitely a different one for us. I mean, we've done over 100 shows, so... Um... It's kind of, we're, we're, I think we're allowed to do something experimental every now and then. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're looking, you see Golden Sun, The Lost Age, and you're like, wow, these guys just played this game in September. And I kind of feel like they were frustrated by it. And then for some reason, they returned to it months later. Yeah, this The sequel. Yeah, that's kind of what happened. Uh, so I guess a little bit of backstory. I think what happened was we both were like, huh, Golden Sun the first game for the GBA is kind of half an experience, right? It, it's it's half of what you would expect from a JRPG. This is the second half, and we thought, huh, okay. It'd be kind of nice to get the full story, uh, and there was this big, illustrious scam of this golden cheat. So you can import your characters from the first game into the second game. And I said, hey, look, we could take this big master cheat, we have it, we could start the second game, and we could be overpowered. So that means none of the nonsense of having to grind levels or develop or like scour the world for these little magical creatures that we're collecting. Awesome, cool, what a fun experience. You just jump into it and you're basically you're playing a Zelda, right? You're an overpowered guy, you're playing a Zelda game. Uh, this game is not that. The import doesn't happen till like 25 hours into the game. So essentially we were starting from scratch playing a frustrating RPG again and we both kind of just didn't have the <laughs> gumption to continue. Is that is that fa- is that a fair way to describe our situation of where we find ourselves? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that like spread over, over more time that this game in bite sites would be very enjoyable, but we just kind of had like it just left this wanting something and it, it was like this game kind of sets up a lot and then just doesn't really like expand on it kind of like lays this like nice groundwork but you kind of want to see what's the end of the groundwork so you kind of end up just following the road but it's just road work if there's just nothing at the end of the journey it just kind of stops and it's like oh hey here pick it up in the second one and then the story just kind of repeats but then things are but I, I'm, we're gonna. I'm gonna save. The, we, do we save the massive twist until later? I think. We yeah. So, uh, and this is just kind of more of like a disclaimer of what's going on. So, uh, if you are tuning in and you're a big Golden Sun fan and you really liked uh, listening to our first experience, this is our like an addendum podcast. So we're looking at the Golden Sun, the Lost Age. We're not gonna do a part one, a part two. We're just gonna talk about this game in generalities. I have the plot written out. I didn't play through the whole game. I stopped after a couple hours because I was just frustrated. Uh, but we're gonna do kind of an addendum a conclusion right so in theory you can listen to our first shows this is kind of us our sequelizing that first kind of series of games then it's done because it i don't know it, it's it's tough we'll get into it i think it is a good game it has lots of valid points it's not something i'm willing to do or play at this point right and the best way to describe it is i kind of looked at it as I don't want to play an rpg because i don't want to get lost in experience and have to build and grind out a team 
that's like super complicated. And this is a very complicated system, right? Similar to like Final Fantasy VIII. There's a very intricate, complicated system. Some people are really into that, right? And I think you could sit there and be like, oh man, I love Final Fantasy VIII because of all the role playing, right? You can, all the character building. Okay, neat. Golden Sun has a lot of those elements. I could see people really being into this. It's just not what I'm looking at at the same time, right? Like if, even if I'm going back and playing, let's say Final Fantasy VII, I love that game. I think it's great. I'm probably playing it with God mode because I don't want to grind. I don't, right? Like that's not something I'm into at this point in my life. And I think that's just God, Golden Sun has found me at a point where I'm not interested in what it's putting down. But I think there's lots of interesting elements and I understand why someone would like this. So that was kind of like my analogy. Uh, I want to play this game with cheat modes, right? Give me a cheat. I want to be able to play and like be level 30 and like one shot every enemy up until the end boss, or maybe I need a strategy. I, I'm here for the story. I'm not here for the, 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 the complicated nuances that this game has, right? So, but I don't know. For some reason, I decided we should still talk about this game. So good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, we RPGs take a lot of time, and we this was a franchise we were like, we're gonna willing to give this an honest shot. Yeah, and it just didn't really sink it. Like it didn't hook us. Um, and that's that's just kind of where it where it's at. Yeah. But we both kind of want to talk about it because it's like we both have fond memories of this franchise and and i'm not gonna i wouldn't go on the record and saying they're like bad games or like these are actually going to be in our bad tier list but it's like they're just i think they're just missing something yeah. and um i know that a lot of the ex expanded universe is actually kind of like fascinating and interesting but they just don't really like let you get there and that's just it's frustrating it is uh, very, very frustrating. And it's, I think it comes back to even, I've talked about this a couple of times of like comfort gaming, right? Like comfort food. And this just isn't hitting me in that comfort spots, right? Uh, on the plus side, I guess we can announce it here. This was blocked off in our calendar as Golden Sun Part 1 or Golden Sun The Lost Age Part 1. Next month, Golden Sun The Lost Age Part 2. We talked and we said, how about we just do what Golden Sun? We talk about it, a you know, see see how we how how we do you know we kind of give the series justice we like put a nice bow on it but then we play pokemon so we get to play pokemon uh diamond and pearl i've actually never played those games before so we kind of get to play that we're gonna play the remakes talk about that and have a it, it, it just seems more comforting right we were talking before the show we're both kind of into pokemon we're talking about different strategies and and, and having a lot more i don't know just joy passion and i kind of feel like last year we suffered through some some games that just really were passionless right and i didn't feel the joy or the comfort playing them right whether it was like the the, the gomon game for the super nintendo or like sarge's heroes and final fantasy 8 and at some point i was like what am i doing with my life so instead of this year i was just like no let's not suffer at this point and then just... i made you watch some tales from the crypt stuff it's great great year oh it was um phenomenal. filled with joy yeah um <laughs> uh yeah i think pokemon does something that we were just we were both just gushing about the gameplay and all the different things that interact like we're all like how we're gonna build our team yeah and i think that golden sun kind of drops the ball when it comes to the gin system because i you you don't care about every gin. There's 78 of them. Name one. Oh, it is just the like, mechanic. It, it's just like, remember the spheres from Final Fantasy X? A gin is just yeah. a sphere, right? Like it is just this arbitrary. It doesn't even have to be a gin. It could have just been, uh, remember Quest 64? And you could find those little fountains that gave you like mana and you collected your mana and different stats. That's all you needed, right? They just put a face on the little weird flickery sprite yeah and you can swap them in, in between your yeah. characters i mean and again it's 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 an interesting system if you're into it like final fantasy 8 cool great you love the it's not for me i think it's a flawed system but i could see someone really getting into it and finding their comfort food comfort gaming in that system not for me so yeah that's yeah, yeah. I, I don't like spending time in, men in menus i like spending time playing the game yeah hence, well hence why we chose pokemon and like we will do a review at some point like things i found frustrated so i don't want to like throw i just kind of wanted to have a big disclaimer off the top uh this show is gonna be a little different right i think it's gonna be actually a really fun show and had we just got into it normally and like not even talked about the nonsense but i 
made a game night decision as we started recording here. Before we get into the show, there's a big disclaimer. Uh, if you're not a fan of Golden Sun, you're not missing much. But if you are a fan of the series, I get it, right? And if you're like a little bit curious, give it a try. I think you're gonna have a really fun experience. However, I do believe buying a strategy guide or finding a good guide online would make the difference, right? And this is the kind of game where I almost would want a physical strategy guide to follow around and like play and look at look up stuff because it's complicated and then there's things you're going to miss and it's going to be frustrating. That would eliminate those. But I also don't want to sit and play a game with a magazine at this point in my life. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So with that being said, should we get into it? That's it. So there you go. So there's a 10 minute preamble. I'm not sure how long the show will be because it's, again, going to be a little bit different, but Golden Sun. There we go. Golden Sun, the Lost Age. Start of the show. Whew. There we go. Was, was, this is like an old school episode where we just re- talked about, like, had some terrible cold open where we argued about Star Wars or we told stupid stories from our lives. Cool. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Awesome. Yep. That's, that's it. Throwback. Old school. Ah, Golden Sun, the Lost Age. Uh, it was developed by Camelot Software Planning. Uh, it sold 686,000 copies. Couldn't even break a million. Kind of makes sense. I feel like, when was the first one released? 2001 or something? So like two years later, that's a little bit of a... Yeah, they should have had these games closer, like six months between, maybe. That would have helped. Uh, release date was April 14th, uh, 2003. I think I already said that. How long to beat has this game at 31 hours? That is a lot of gameplay, but I just don't want to do it. Uh, Prey set release was thirty nine ninety nine. If you factor inflation, that'd be $61.61 and 61 cents today. Uh, on eBay, you can get a copy of this game for about 30 to $160. And on eShop, uh, 10 bucks if you have a Wii U. It's kind of exciting. You can play it on the original cart, Wii U or an emulator. All right, all right. Uh, I've yeah. Got a, yeah. Yeah, they definitely should have probably released these two, th- like, closer together. I, I, yeah. Because as soon as, yeah, <laughs> like, six months, you play through the first games, you get it. Oh, man, what's the sequel going to look like? If you have to wait more than probably six months, I think you're losing interest, right? Yeah. Because that first game, there, there's not too much going on. I, like, I don't know if it, it hooks you enough to, to play this game later. Like, you walk by, like, oh, the sequel to that game I played two years ago. I don't care, right? Like, let's just move on with our lives. Yeah, especially, like, it's if it was a big smash success and everybody, like, couldn't wait to get their hands on yeah. the next one, it's like, But yeah. I do think it is too cute to hit, like, an older audience for the most part, too. Like, that older general also, graphic. You're hitting more I also kids. think being on, like, on the Game Boy Advanced, it's just, like, two years on the handheld is decades. Yeah, like very like, much so. So... Yeah, you've come and gone, and I think that target audience you might have aged yourself out. So marketing, I don't know, they're a little uh, slow. Yeah, I think it was two years because probably okay. There we go. So, uh, so jumping into our patent wayback machine, what we're gonna do is I set up the top for a bit of a pop culture show. We're gonna look at what the pop cultural landscape was, and you're like, oh, that's what I was doing in April 2003. Makes sense. So we started by asking Tyson, what is your favorite show? That's weird. I feel like we've already been here before, like almost exactly. Alex, did I just copy this from a different show? Huh. I'm not sure. So, season 12, Insane Clown Poppy. Uh, so, Insane Clown Poppy. Krusty learns that he has a daughter. Hilarity ensues. And then The Mummy, the animated series, season 1, episode 8, The Cloud People. No, we've definitely been here before. I definitely just copied this off of, like, Golden Sun. What the heck happened? These are good questions. You know what? Do we just... I'm let's a- just skip it. Oh, I was going to say, I was like, I, I let's see, Golden Sun. No, nothing. Do I not have an original Golden Sun? Huh. All right, well, apparently we're not getting a Wayback <laughs> Machine. Huh. Hmm. That's fine. That is fine. Uh, video games that were released, like maybe I just screwed up that part? Six Feet Under, Baby Looney Tunes, movies. So this week we could have saw Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. No, that's definitely not not right. Not right at all. Video games. Burnout. No. SSX Tricky. Absolutely not. Super Smash Brothers Melee. Luigi's Mansion. Those different Halo. I don't think Halo was 2000. Huh. Well, I really butchered. Like, I obviously just gave up on this show altogether. So, <laughs> good job, me. Let's see. Movies. 2003. I feel like that, that that's a good one, right? Because then you can always kind of remember, you know, what your life looked like. So, let's just look at the movies released here in April 2003. And then I think I guess we have to move on because I really, uh, poof, really. Yeah, I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure that's the ones from the first Golden Sun. Huh. 
Tusk. Which makes sense, because I, I feel like I lost part of the... Oh, because I definitely opened up Golden Sun Part 1 and started working on the notes and then accidentally saved it. And then at one point I looked and I just took for granted that the Wayback Machine was already filled in and moved on with my life. So that's definitely what happened. Uh, so we're looking at April 14th. Uh, around this time, we have Anger Management. Okay. Johnny English. And yeah. those are kind of the big movies. So I kind of feel like maybe we were here just on our last show, too, because I made some comment about you refuse to spoon with me. So maybe X-Men 2 is coming out here. Phone Booth. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Core. Look at this. Look at this. Dreamcatcher was released in theaters around this time. Uh, if you waited a week or two, you could get Holes. Hmm? Identity. And X2. Look at that. That's adorable. So if you really want a Wayback Machine, listen to our <laughs> bridged Wayback Machine from X-Men 2. Yep. Yep. All Sounds right. like a solid time. I uh, mean, that's it. So, Midnight Club 2 got also released around this time. So, oof, oof, can't wait. Yeah, other video games with uh, 2003 video games. Well, there's like Ruby and Sapphire. Uh, these are like in the in the year. So Mario Kart Double Dash, X2, uh, Super Mario Brothers 3 on the Game Boy Advance. April. Okay, yes. Midnight Club 2. said that. That's a good point. Uh, yeah. Crazy Wind Taxi. Waker. Golden yep. Sun. Final Fantasy 11. No, that doesn't affect us. That was it. So April was actually kind of a slow month. So Yeah. We had a Marvel vs. Capcom in March. Metal Gear Solid Ooh. Substance was released. Okay. Interesting. All right. Well... Well then, clearly I didn't care that much. And really, the first 15 minutes of this podcast could just be cut out because it, it provides little to no content. Normally our shows aren't this terrible. Remember when I said this was going to be a good show? I lied. <laughs> this is delightful. Well, I, I long-time listeners, this is us off the rails and just picking up the pieces. It's that, okay. That's it. Like We were literally just driving our car and like, yes, Golden Sun is fine. And then you looked out and we're like crashed into a transformer and there's a light pole on our car and you're like, wow, that guy really got fucked up in like like 100 feet from his house. Yeah. It's like things went, <laughs> that escalated quickly. There was, no, there was no accident on a freeway today. He didn't even get out of his cul-de-sac. So, oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah. All right. So, now that you don't know what the pop cultural landscape looked like, <laughs> ah. All right, so the development details of this fun game. Uh, the Lost Age was first revealed in Japan in early 2002, with a magazine Famutsu being the first publication to reveal the or review the game. The Lost Age was highly anticipated. It topped IGN's list of Game Boy Advance most wanted games for 2003. The North American version of this game was playable at an E3 Expo in 2003. I guess it's just E3. Uh, 2003 or 2002 and ign noted that the opening of the game uh did always did away with the notorious boring opening sequence from the original golden sun introducing the characters in between the action GameSpot previewed the, a localized copy of lost age in february 2003 and noted that the game built on its predecessor's graphical engine with the environments in the game featuring rich details with little touches such as birds that fly off as you approach. That's... Oh, boy. All right. You know what? That's the stuff we were going for at the time. They're like, hey, look, this did what Link to the Past did a long time ago, but on the handheld. Wow. Amazing. Amazing that they were able to do that. It's weird there's not much more written about this game. I kind of feel like everyone just quit on this game. Fans, game developers, well, media two in general. Years, two years is a long time. Like, yeah. did they literally were like, let's just split the story absolutely in half and start from scratch on the new one. But like, like, also leave you with like more questions and answers and not make it super cohesive and have little to no conveyance and just make it kind of a frustrating experience. Well, and also make you spend more time in the darn menus than anything else. Yeah. It's like... Great. This, these, I, I love exploring a world and talking to people. Like, And it's kind of cool. Like, They give you the ability to mind read people, but n nothing's interesting. I don't want to... Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, awesome, you have to do that to, to advance. But like, I also forget about it sometimes. It's just yeah. not that great. So the controls of this game, uh, basic RPG controls you move around with the directional pads in the overworld and towns and dungeon areas a interacts with things b pulls up a venue uh you have a set of spells that work in the overworld 
they help you solve puzzles apparently they get like super complicated and they're very well thought out and uh, intricate later on which i was like i'm kind of glad i missed all that because yeah it's cute but also if you don't have lift and like you don't know how this works and you end up in a spot where you need to use lash and you're like i didn't get lash where the fuck is lash oh it's way back at the beginning this like area and everyone went to just, uh, yeah you can equip characters with a few pieces of armor and collect gins little magical guys that cramp you spells and summons and battles as well as they change your character's class i don't know how it works sometimes you need growth I don't think I've ever had growth on one of my characters ever playing this game. I have to, like, randomly just turn things on and off. So, again, it's messy. It, it's, like, overly complicated. And I think that's where they lose me, right? Is because nothing is, like, thought out well. It's overthought. And I'm like, I don't... I just don't get it. I don't understand how this game works. Yeah, yeah. And now, neither do I. And I guess that's kind of my big issue with it. And... I guess, like, when it comes to... We were talking Pokemon earlier. But, like, when it comes to Pokemon, like, the deeper layers of, like, what nature do you want on your Pokemon? It's like, that's... That's that's not that deep. But it's kind of like, hey, there's this extra layer to things if you want to. This game is like, no, you must memorize that these things can unlock different character classes so in certain parts of the game you want to switch your class to somebody else because it's like this is so convoluted oh and and it's not it's not fun it's not like that's not engaging yeah like you can have a deep intricate complicated battle system or you can have a deep intricate system in your game that is completely fine right like i have no qualms with that i don't think that's a bad thing to have right i i think we're both in agreement. the problem is when it's a deep, complicated system that I need to learn and I don't understand, just play the game, right? Like Pokemon, you could, in theory, get a starter, mash A, and beat the game. And you don't have to capture anyone, right? Like, you can just beat the whole game with one Pokemon, and it's fine. Well, and I think, like, the other cool thing about it, like, so... um, they There's the thing called Twitch Plays. So a bunch of, like, people in chat were spamming controls of how to play pokemon but they like they they like every bunch of people spamming inputs beat the game yeah i don't think he, people spamming inputs could beat golden sun not at all because you would you would get to a puzzle and you'd be screwed mm-hmm. and, and, and i mean not saying you can't have those things zelda is amazing zelda has uh especially a link between worlds is one of the better zelda games i've ever played in my entire life in each dungeon you know, you're tasked at having a hammer. And now there's 50 puzzles throughout the dungeon. It's actually not that many. Maybe 20 puzzles throughout the dungeon that involve the hammer. Here's some enemies. Here's this. You know, what if we interact? What if we do this? Oh, here's a new thing, right? And they do a really nice job of, like, progressing you through the level, and all of a sudden you know how to use the hammer. So you get to the next area where maybe you don't, you know, and they teach you a new spell on, like, the wind rod, right? And it's very well thought out. Whereas this game's just kind of like, ah, this dungeon you need lash if you don't have lash you're done and i'm like i don't know what that is i've never been shown it right it was never indicated that's something i should grab but now it's intricate for me and my like my enjoyment of this game so it's just i don't know the conveyance just wasn't there right and yeah well and it's also like i find you have to have lash selected to somebody so that they can now use it like Mm -hmm. it just Zelda does it so easily, where it's just like, here's the hammer, select the hammer, uh-huh. use the hammer. Well, it's like, yeah. In, 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 in uh, Golden Sun, it's like, make sure that you have this discovered, and then in these certain spots, you're going to want to use that. And it's like, don't forget to have it. But you can't somebody. even. And, it's like, and you could argue that, okay, Zelda, most of them are on systems that have more than two buttons. The Game Boy Advanced only had an A, B, shoulder buttons, select, start. That was it, right? For inputs. So you're like, ah, right. it was just limited. Link's Awakening handled the system better, right? So, like, they gave you... A- yeah, well, it's also, like, it's the there's not slow animations for every little thing to take you out of the game. Yeah. I don't want to watch just animations and feel like I'm not engaging the game. Zelda does a great thing of it. It makes you feel like you're controlling the character. This mm-hmm. is just, like, you're running your character from interactive spot to interactive spot and you're never really like playing them so you don't really get invested like you're never doing tricky platforming or anything that makes you feel that you're in control you're just kind of i don't know it it, it doesn't feel 
fun. <laughs> I, I, that, yeah. That's it. Like at some point, I got this ability called pound, and it was pound stakes in the ground. I'd walk up to them and press pound, and they're like, "Ah, you weren't in the right pixel," and it, it I didn't pound the stake in, and you're like, "You have to come at it from the top, not the side." I'm like, "Why does that matter, guys? Come on." Yeah. So I mean, only, it really only to go into a, like a couple second animation, and you're like, "I mean, it makes sense it's... why we didn't play this game, right, guys?" Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, Even though we're conf- oh, our notes are just a mess. But you're like, I get it. So let's, I guess we're looking at this game. Uh, hold on. So that's kind of why maybe we came for the conclusion. All right. So here we go. So the first memories, I got nothing. This game did not register. I think I was at grade 10. I was about a few months away from purchasing a GameCube and getting Wind Waker Mario Golf. Right. So then just based on that knowledge, I have a Game Boy Advanced. Actually, I don't because it was taken from me. So I have an N64. Maybe a Super Nintendo sees the light of day, but probably not very frequently, right? Like, I don't think we got into that too much. And a PS2. So we're N64, PS2, probably. I don't know what we were playing, but it definitely wasn't this. Yeah, no, no. Um, I remember it probably came out because we probably still had our Nintendo Power or whatever and saw like it as an article and we're like, oh, hey, Golden Sun Lost Age. That's like the sequel. See, I don't think we but, had, I, I don't know yeah, when we nothing. had our Nintendo Power, and I don't think it was, at least at this point, like, it was beyond, right? I'm thinking, like, 2001 yeah. or something is That's probably fair. when we did well, our Nintendo I, I Power. Might have been, I might have been reading magazines and grocery stores, as one did back in the day. Pretty much, but, like, I don't know. Again, it just didn't register. So, story recap. I'm going to tell you what happened in the last game. Uh, then we're going to go kind of, like, line by line, paragraph by paragraph through this story. I have some questions. All right. Um, I have all sorts of questions, so okay. let's get through this so I can kind of ask our questions, dissect it. Yeah. Okay, and then we have a little bit of a review, and then a cultural significance. So bear with us. Actually, I don't think the show. I know we didn't do anything for fifteen minutes, but this show is going to be under an hour. That's my projection. That's my prediction. So we didn't do anything for fifteen minutes. We won't do anything in the last fifteen minutes. This game. Oh boy. And, and then it ends like uh, the first one. Yeah, but again, it should be fun. I'm really gonna love coming back and relist this is going to make my top three potendo series to listen to golden suns oh boy all right let's go so story recap so two adept characters named uh minardi and satorus invade a village and awaken a temple security system while trying to steal some elemental stars in the ensuing chaos some people die Years later, upon their return, a protagonist intervene, end up finding the elemental stars, losing them to the antagonist, so they must go off on their adventures to stop the p- evil plans. They venture into a lighthouse, meet an adept girl named Maya, fail to stop the lighthouse from being lit, and must continue to search for ways to stop them. They have various adventures in forests, deserts, and on a boat. They meet an old man named Babby, who has his own lighthouse. This encounter leads our group to confront bad guys at a second lighthouse where we win and defeat Satros and Mirandi and are left on a cliffhanger. So recap, the bad guys want the lighthouses lit and we are trying to stop them. What a what an amazing first game that was. Yep, yep. I, um, going back, and did you go back and listen to our first two podcasts on this? Uh, not recently. I did when they like first dropped. So I did that. It sounds like two people that are not having a good time playing a game. And <laughs> I was like, why are we playing a sequel to this? Like, I, it was it was that then where I was like, I don't believe that we actually want to do this. So that's kind of when I gave up. Uh, any comments, questions, concerns on the first? No, no but problem. I will say you do write a very good recap. I know. I know where you always have your, your terrible plot summaries. You do a very good job because I mean I, I tried to like summarize some comic books and they just ended up being like novels by the end of it because I was just describing everything that happens because random crap was just happening and I'm like ah oh it's a comic s- book cor- comic book corner is going to be interesting if I ever have to read one of these okay yeah it, it's very yeah okay I'm glad that my like summarizing talents are recognized because like sometimes I'm like I'm like oh, that is how that, that, okay there you go. Krusty finds yep. out he has a daughter. Hilarity ensues. What more do you need to know about that Simpsons episode? That is that Simpsons episode. I know exactly which one you're referring to. Yeah. Perfect. And I know exactly how it ends. But right. it's not spoiled. So, so I, took, you I took the plot summary from Wikipedia. And I think I like melded into this little, we you know, maybe have 12 points here. We'll talk through our 12 points. And you're like, oh, cool. Man, I wish I could have seen that. I don't know. 
So this game picks up from Felix's, and he was from Isaac's village in the first game, and we thought he was dead, and then he turned out working for the bad guys. Oh, it was a whole thing. Uh, and he sh- uh, Right at the end of the last game. So Felix is joined by his sister, Jenna, a Jupiter adept named Sheba. I'm not really sure where she came from. Who cares? Oh, she was previously kidnapped by Satoros. All right, and then this old guy named Craddon, and I kind of hated Craddon. I don't know. So the group searches for a ship to cross to the western half of Wayward. Apparently that's the planet we're on. And learns of a man named Pierce who has been falsely accused of piracy and owns a ship they can use. Felix and his group clear his name and Pierce uh, agrees to join the group. So there you go. That's the first maybe four hours of Golden Sun Part 2. Aren't you excited? Yeah. Got a whole other group of people. Okay. No one we reckon, or like two people, re, three people we recognize, I guess. Because um, Creighton's also just hanging out there yeah. awkwardly. Because he was in the first game for like five, ten minutes and then just dipped. And then uh, here he is, yeah. still being a weirdo. So. so, this is kind of the part I got up to where I saw, I found Pierce in prison and then I had to go somewhere, but I don't know. I quit. I was just like, now nah, I'm done. And it was yeah. the, the moment where. You're playing through this world. You're running around. You get to this temple. You see this temple. You come down and you have to like go all the way around this mountain range up to this temple. And you go up and they're like, you can't come in. Cool. Guess what? Why would I be interested in exploring this boring ass temple entrance if you're telling me the guards are saying don't come in? What you're supposed to do is go to the side, use whirlwind, obviously. Obviously use whirlwind on this like little hidden entrance. Sneak into the temple. You get an ability called lash. So you can like throw... Uh, ropes across rooms and climb up and find hidden items. Why well, didn't do that game? Like, you're, you're, at no point are you indicating I should go into this temple. So I walked away, went, went, you know, 20, 30 minutes later into the game, and then they're like, oh, I was like, I really need Lash to continue. And I'm like, that's kind of when I, when I quit this game, to be honest with you. So, like, the first hour. So what is the hook sometimes we ask ourselves? There literally was no hook in this game. I was just frustrated from Jump Street that I had already missed a major item. Right. Yeah. Um, and that's this game in a nutshell. Like yeah. honestly, like unless you're hooked in the Myth. game mechanics, but I find that it's so boring. Mm-hmm. Like these random encounters are all the same, and they're everybody's got tons of health, and they give you pittance of experience and pittance of coin, mm-hmm. and you rinse repeat. But oh, your magic ref- ref- refills by every step, and you're like. Just let it, my health and my PP just ex- refill every single battle if you're going to have ridiculous battles. Well, that's, yeah, and, and there's, it's there's not like rewarding. One ba- like, and there's, I think, around this time, there's a ridiculous battle that you have to, like, kind of fight. And, it, you, again, barely any experience, ben, barely any money afterwards. And you're like, it's it's such a slog. Yeah. And I understand that they're, like, trying to let, let you just enjoy the fight mechanics, and that's the hook is the fight mechanics and because it's not the story it's because nobody tells you anything and nothing happens and you just wander around from world to world and and i i've been meaning to uh, maybe we'll get to this by the end of it but i have a fun fact that i i, I want to mention and i want to know if you had picked, had picked up on, on this at all at okay all okay. i probably not. <laughs> yeah like i said I'm, alluded to I'm, uh the battle system is they just don't give you the creature comforts right you don't know enemies health I, how do you figure that out, right? Like, show me how much a rat has because it also doesn't have auto-aim. So if I just press attack the rats, my guys just attack, and then once the guy dies, they're like, I don't know what to do. Fuck. Like, give Guess me, I'll defend. You have to do one one or the other. You know, you can have no auto-aim, but then you have to show me people's health or don't show me the health and have auto-aim, right? Like, pick one. So it's just those simple creature comforts, and I think that's what this game is missing is just comfortable gameplay. Yeah. Something like you come back to this world and you're like, oh, that's cute. I'm going to keep playing because of this. Because I really like doing that. It's just, it makes you uncomfortable the whole time. And well, also, it's like the you might as well never swing with your sword or your weapon. You might as well just spam use magic, magic yeah. constantly. Constantly. That's and it. it's like, and you don't even really want to set people to summons because mm-hmm. then you might not lose access to the, their stat boost and you might lose access to their. Um... <sighs> that's the thing. You're running around and you're like, oh, I summoned a guy. Oh, here's a little. Uh, grass that I have to grow. None of my guys have growth. So I'm like in the menu switching party around until so oh all of a sudden oh now they've got growth. Okay, cool. Now I can go to the spell, but then like you go to attack and all they have is something called Astral and use Astral and it's just like light was shone on the field. And I'm like, what does that do? 
right? Like, why did you make my character so crappy so that they can do this growth spell? And then I have to, like, reset everything? Just not good. Yeah. So there you go. So yeah. a sentence in this game. I think we're both checked out. Aren't you kind of curious about what you did miss, though? Hmm? Yeah, I think everybody is. Okay, awesome. All right, so that's that's why we're doing this is because I kind of wanted to have an oral uh, history of this game so then I never have to wonder what happens in Golden Sun. I can just listen to myself talk about it. That seems great. So this game... Uh, Oh, wait, hold on. So Felix is, no, did that. So during this, uh, parts, so we've, we Pierce has joined us, hooray. Uh, so during this, Isaac's party continues to pursue them. Man, I wish it could be Isaac. The group also discovers that their former companion, Alex, has allied himself with Mirandi's Mar- younger sister, Karst, and her partner, Agatio, in order to keep track of Felix. Eventually, Felix's party is able to achieve entrance into Pierce's home a legendary, secluded, Atlantis-like society named Lumeria, far out in the ocean. When they convey or convene with Lumerian's ancient king, Hydros, they learn about alchemy's true nature. It has always been the substance of Wayward's very life force, and its absence over the past ages has caused, caused the world's continent to decrease in size and part of the world to collapse into the abyss. Okay! That is interesting. So this world has a bunch of alchemy in it, and the uh, lighthouses suck it out and give it to people, but people abused it, so they kind of shut down that whole process. But in doing so, the world started to decay because its life force wasn't pumping anymore. That is a very fascinating, interesting, weird gatekeeping story that it. I've now played, you know, 75% of your overall adventure before I find this out? Come on, game. Yeah. See, now this is the stuff that gets tucked into the, the opening of a Final Fantasy game. Yes. Because then the crystals sets... disappear and the, the earth begins to rot and the oceans dry up. Well, that is bad. We should go fix this. This game's like, here's some crystals. We're not going to tell you what we're doing with them, though. <laughs> Light these lighthouses. We're not going to tell you what we're doing with them, though. Oh, my gosh. Like, it is just. And, yeah. it. So it's like. And we so we playing the whole game of the first game and up until the first like what this probably ten hours in yeah now now we're gonna tell you what this whole entire franchise is about and you're like okay yeah okay you could you could have given us little hints at any point no no okay well also the fact that you can just like we have okay first you got the first game we're chasing felix he's hanging out with the bad guys and all of a sudden there's like a plot twist and you're like oh felix has actually been a good guy this whole time and i'm like so i was basically a villain in the first game like i had no autonomy i was just mindlessly a soldier working against the cause i don't believe like, ah. all right so knowing that yeah. restoring alchemy is what must be done to actually save the world felix crosses the sea in order to activate the jupiter lighthouse but when isaac's pursuing party enters the lighthouse they are trapped and ambushed by kratz and agatio felix Rescues Isaac, because obviously I'm stronger than freaking son of a gun. Uh, but Karst and Agatio escape with the Mars Star, formerly in Isaac's possession. Oh no, so now the other bad guys have it, and now we team up. Hooray! So, so now I guess you would have... Eight party members. To all, yeah, eight party members? Yep. Okay. Yep. Uh, and it, I think, did we talk about this at the beginning? So to transfer your data, you can't use a transfer cable... You can just use a password because that makes sense. So they have like a, what was it? A 300 character password that you have to enter. Yep. I took a while. Luckily, as soon as you entered it and you're wrong, you could just go back and like edit it. It wasn't like you entered it and it's like, you're wrong. Enter it again. That was 30 minutes of my life where I just like carefully went over every character to make sure I like P's and J's and they all look the same. That's literally like, hey, did you file your tax return from last year? Oh my gosh. It's just... Painful. Awful. It's yeah. It is a uh, not the best system. I get it. Okay. There's obviously lots of intricates, but now if you do the big big hundred three hundred character password, your team comes in and they're level thirty and they have all the best equipment and they have all the gins from the last game. And you're like, oh, cool, awesome. But again, am I playing fifteen hours of this game to get to that point? No, probably not. 
Probably not. Probably not, right? All right. So then Felix uh, is finally able to explain to Isaac why alchemy's release is necessary thing for everyone, and that Satros and Randy were aiming for this goal merely for the sake of the survival of their home colony of Prox to the far north, located near the Mars Lighthouse. He also reveals that his parents and Isaac's father are alive. I had no idea Isaac's father has died, so that's cool. Uh, and currently being held pro a hostage in Prox in order to coerce Felix's initial cooperation. Isaac and his party agree to help Felix, and the group sets out north to activate the Mars Lighthouse. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, it looks like stakes are finally getting raised. There you go. So the final 10 hours of the game, or so ish uh sees eight party members going through this world uh apparently it can get quite difficult i did watch a retrospective where a guy went through and claimed to do everything legitimately but i don't know seems suspect and he's like i found every gin all by myself and it was so much fun I was like, no it wasn't you lie <laughs> you are a liar yeah sir. don't be a simp to golden sun fans like guess what there's seven of Look. them they don't they don't really care that much either like I, and and the franchise dead man yeah like, this game's owned by Nintendo, Ooh. and Nintendo's like, here, we're going to release every single fighter ever, and every game ever that's going to have a character is always going to be in Smash Brothers. Does Golden Sun get a character in Smash Brothers? No one cares no. about Golden Sun, so. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. So, there you go. So, you're like, oh, wow. But it's, in okay, all right. Again, we have questions. I got three more set, three more paragraphs to read. Four more, maybe. <laughs> and uh, there we go. So, where are we uh, so they discover that Karts and Agatio have been transformed into a mindless dragon and are forced to defeat them. They return the Mars Stone before succumbing to their wounds. Okay, all right. Uh, when we reach the top of the tower, the Wise One, which is like this weird eye from the first game. He's kind of re the entity responsible for the original tasking of Isaac to prevent the breaking of the alchemy seals, confronts them. He warns them that mankind could very well destroy Wayward themselves if they had possession of such power. The power that the lighthouses provides, whatever this is called, like, adept, adept. And when Isaac insists on breaking the seal regardless, the Wise One summons a giant three-headed dragon for the party to battle in the final struggle. Okay, all right. So I guess that kind of makes sense. So the world was going to be destroyed if the magic was released, but if the magic was released, mankind would destroy the world. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Kind of a damned if you do, damned if you don't. Yeah. Either quick death or slow death. So. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, it, it, it does kind of get interesting that you're like, ah, it, I like that. I like gray stories. You know what? I'm okay with that. I don't need good versus evil. I can handle this. Like. A little bit of ambiguity in my story. Now, it would have been nice up until 55 hours into a story if I would have had this choice thrust upon me, right? And maybe had to, like, I don't know, ambiguity throughout the gameplay. Instead of just been like, I am a paragon for good. I am only good. Oh, I'm wrong? Oh, I'm sorry. All right. And then finally, final two things. After slaying the dragon, the party of adepts finish their objective and activate the Mars Lighthouse with all four towers across Wayward Lit. The process that heralds the return of the force of alchemy to Wayward ensues at the mountain t uh, sanctum Mount Alpha. Alex is there. However, he took advantage of everyone else's quest that he could gain the immense power from for himself from the light of Golden Sun, the manifestation of alchemy itself. However, uh, he discovers that the wise one has taken steps to prevent this uh, and is left to die as the mountain sinks into the earth. So now that the, the towers are lit, the world is fine. Alchemy apparently doesn't go to mankind. I think the, maybe the wise one takes all the power himself and then the world saved. Yay. So that was the plot of Golden Sun 2 and also 1. Yeah, they really crammed everything to that last third, eh? I guess. So that's kind of it. Uh, I'm learning everything. I'm really glad I did not d dive into this adventure because, like, oh, God, it just seems so not good. I think that for what it – like, it, it tried to tell this big grand story, but it feels like they didn't have it even planned out until they were literally wrapping this up. And not having a story essentially planned out for the whole first of the game because mm. it's not even like oh hey what you're doing were, was kind of like it was a clever trick it was like no what you were doing in the first one you did that but turns out you were the bad guy that's, that's it like, so 
Uh, that, okay. So with cool, that, thanks. Yeah, with that, I have some questions. All right, I have some questions. I also have I also have a question for you. Okay. So. All right, so I have I have two. You have one. Uh, let's do a let's do a Tyson sandwich here. So why did uh, Mirandi and Satros try and steal the elemental stars? Like why didn't they just ask? I guess maybe like the the wise one would have been like, no, this is bad. But they could have been like, the world is falling apart. Like we really could use this and i think there's a way that we could work together with this adept people that are protecting the elements right to, to save the world like there has to be some justification because we're doomed either way like we're we're the world is falling apart it's going to fall into the abyss there's gonna be nothing left of the planet if we don't do something like why why, why wasn't that just the the, the first approach because mm, because the plot called for it because if they would have just walked up and been like hey let's just can we just talk to you about this and be reasonable about this it's like obviously we're the most powerful things here it's not like we're th- we're threatened by you so we have to be like let's be sneaky because yeah. they'll never understand it's like you could just ask and if they come in and ask yeah. and they're like no there's no way right okay well, we're gonna try again like okay we're gonna, use, like, we're gonna use force right like and that's yeah, how, like, that's how you approach it like okay we're gonna come back with greater numbers and we're gonna take it right yeah, yep. there's gotta be some um, some type of negotiation what's your question did you know that this entire co- like world is takes place on a world that's like a flat earth? Oh, I did know that. Yeah, because like literally when they say the world like the side The continents are, are shrinking and like so actually like the world if it was stretched flat, like and then it was slowly crumbling into the abyss of nothing. And nobody knows what's past that because it's like but it's uh I was like I did not know that. No one has like I figured that this would be like that's a cool little twist. That's a neat little uh, sure that's thing a, to run on. That's but, a fun idea in a fantasy story. The idea of a flat Earth, right? Like, there's this yeah. old movie I recall watching where these sailors actually like sail off the edge of the Earth, and then they just fall down and they're just like stuck on some sand, and they're like nowhere. I don't know if yeah. that's like a movie you're like I remember that, but like that's a very uh, interesting concept in a fantasy world, right? Because yeah flat earth think of like uh asgard from the marvel movies right it's just this floating little rock with water in space cool why not yeah and it's like it kind of leads for the implications of what's past that it's like i i really wish that that would have been a little bit more addressed and like that could have been interwoven into the story more because it's like that's a cool little world development thing but my, yeah, my question was going to be, did you pick up on that at all? Not and I'm in like, the slightest, no. Yeah, so like that's something the whole first game. It's like, you guys could have drip fed this stuff. They could have done a lot of things. That's, that's it. So then my other question is, uh, is uh, oh, I guess it actually was just a, so why, why, didn't, they, why didn't they do that? Uh, it's because they would have revealed that part of the story at the beginning, right? So they would have given you the full grasp of the situation, uh, which then meant you probably would like be the bad guy. Right, if they came in and said, "Look, we want this because the world's being destroyed," and you were like, "No, no one takes those; they're sacred." I'm like, okay, well, we're gonna come back and take it. And now you're like, "Yeah, but like, why don't we like?" You'd probably have some type of ambiguity, and it would be more of a challenging narrative, and there wouldn't be a twist. It was just sloppy, a sloppy way of telling the story. I think. Yeah, right? I think it's, and I think that that's why. Like, this is a twist for twist sake. If you're gonna do a twist, that's it. You generally can do it much more cleaner much more interestingly yeah. um and it's why be so sloppy and messy about it um no idea but it, i it does uh, seem it like comes a very down to like Im- there was yeah new new writers very first time telling a story yeah so they didn't know how much to say at the beginning and they just couldn't and they never worked it in and the dialogue was just pretty lackluster overall well, not only so. that but they just went for the tropey basic and i don't want to rag on all anime like that's not what i'm here to do but it does seem very jrpg anime logic to say uh this guy came in and tried to steal this thing and rather than just explain what's going on right like lots of stories how many stories are there that are just this thief stole this thing and then you talk to them afterwards and you're like oh they were just misunderstood you know they didn't use their communication skills and that's kind of the resolution is like we're now friends. Yeah. I feel but like I think that's very yeah. tropey uh, kind of coming from. Yes. Right. And as a, as, as if I was that writer, I would be kind of like, this is, I couldn't do any better than this. I'm so sorry. 
but it's like there are ways of is... telling the story i don't think it worked for this game and maybe it did if the it was a little bit more interesting right so they, they should have refined the zelda elements they should have had you presented you with these like abilities better i don't know right like the presentation yeah. was actually i'd say overall the presentation of this game was just lacking so maybe we should get into the review yeah part I, I have a couple just, uh... notes here so review i was gonna do like a side quest cinema review because we're kind of in that mold i kind of feel like we've kind of explained ourselves but so what parts worked okay let's let's do that so let's what parts worked uh what parts were you excited about this game so myself i was excited to return to this world the gameplay is fun and interesting. I enjoy the dungeon design. I think that's really strong, right? Lots of RPGs are just like, here's a dungeon crawl that you have to go through, and you're fighting a bunch of guys. But this is, like, there's puzzles and shortcuts and, like, gin to find. And I'm like, okay, all right, all right. And, and like, the story is actually quite in-depth. The world feels very fleshed out. Awesome. It's just the presentation that is kind of lacking, right? So, Tyson, what parts of this game worked for you? Um, see, I really appreciate like a slow burn of the story. And like, yeah. so Final Fantasy nine is a huge favorite for mine, for me. And that story is a real slow burn. Mm-hmm. So I don't mind that. And so like the end first one kind of ended on a cliffhanger. I was like, you know, I'm okay with this. And, and I was plugging along pretty okay with this game, but it's just, yeah, there's, there's parts of this that I was eh, meh about, yeah. but the story was interesting and i kind of wanted to see where it went because i hate having not a resolution yes so i need to get my resolution why i don't watch some like tv series if there's five seasons of a tv series i'm like if i can't like i need to know what happens and i know that every season especially if it doesn't end properly it's just gonna be a conclusion and i hate it and i'm gonna keep watching it that's why you're not gonna watch all of the walking dead from one to season 11 it's and and the three spinoffs it's just for a lackluster resolution. Pretty much. Versus I'd rather watch a movie. Like, I love watching an hour and a half movie, two hour movie. It's just done. In, out, boom. Walk away. Awesome. That's what I want, right? I want the payoff. I'm not in for the ambiguity and the frustration that comes with those, like, longer n- narratives. So then what what didn't work for us, right? So uh, why did you have to be new people? You know? Like, if I could have just been Isaac in this adventure, I probably would have played it, Right? Hands down. I don't want to build. I don't want to go through all the bullshit RPG stuff. That's not where I'm at in my life. I don't want to grind characters. I don't want to learn this menu system. I don't want to collect gin. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do any of the bullshit that this game has you do that is in a lot of RPGs. I just want to play the game. I don't want to. Yeah. And that goes with like any game at this point in my life. I don't want to grind and have to go to a beach and like steal ice magic from the stupid shell guys on the beach in Final Fantasy VIII. That is fucking boring. I don't want to have to grind up to omni slash in zelda or in final fantasy 7 right like i don't i don't want to do those things just give it to me (laughs) let me play the game with omni slash let me play with god mode on right let me play as isaac let me have all the the things let me build my best characters that's kind of what i was hoping for honestly with this experience and the only reason i signed up so i kind of feel like i was like i don't know lied to I, you know, they, they sold me that the second game, there was a, I could transfer my game and keep all my progression. That's what I was going for. This game did not have that. So that's kind of, I think what didn't work for me. If I'm being perfectly honest, like if I could have had that, I would have beat this game and you would, we would not be playing Pokemon next month. So that's fair. Um, what didn't work for me was just the, like, like you said, just the gameplay. It's boring, monotonous. I hate the random encounters. They're so, so frequent. You get so little experience. It almost made me, I think it's barrier or something, like a magical spell you get earlier on. So you can just like not have random encounters. Mm. And not gonna lie, I use that so freaking much that like I'm probably under leveled, but I really don't care. Like this game mm. is just, it just kind of, it's monotonous. Um, and I hate that they did change the characters because we barely got character development in the first game. Yes. Let me spend more time with these characters so we can continue to develop them so I can get more invested in them. Because I was just starting to kind of feel like getting to know them, even though I spent bloody 20 hours with these people, because they drip feed all the character developments and all the plot and all the interesting things. So you just run around doing BS all the time. I hate running around just doing random hodgepodgey missions and, and running into stuff for like go fetch quests and it's like that's not interesting yeah let me explore the world and actually like feel like i'm making a difference 
and that's a, a, a amazing point too right like there is no character development you know what all the characters kind of look the same i'm pulling up a list here of just like a picture of everyone isaac oh he's blonde when you said alex was at the end he kind of does that last little twist where the, he tries to take the power for himself it's like wait which one's alex he, and I'm like, yeah. I, I I hope it's not. And I'm thinking in my head, I hope it's not uh, Isaac's buddy from the first one because I don't even know his name. Mm. Uh, well, I mean, they're just palette swaps, right? Like my blue hair, Jenna, red, kind of like brunette. Okay, cool. Isaac blonde, Felix dark hair. Uh, there's two blonde characters that have like the exact same haircut. I couldn't tell you anything different between Sheba and Isaac. Garrett kind of. Garrett, that's the guy's name. Yeah, so he's got kind of like red spiky hair. And it's just, they literally just took the characters and changed like color hair. But that, just because a guy is, has purple hair, doesn't mean he's a new character. Yeah. Right? And, no, and at, at least in that's... It, the character design is just fu- fucking awful, awful. And I would, I yeah. argued, I sat and argued on this podcast in Final Fantasy 7, or sorry, Final Fantasy 6, that the characters are unique and they're fun and they have different stories. Cause like one guy's a Yeti and there's like a girl with a paintbrush and there's a man who has a chainsaw. Right. And I'm like, look at, look at them. And you're like, there is no character development. They just different pixels. But I'm like, but the pixels look different. You know, like the Yeti looks way different from everyone else in this game. They're like, ah, here's Carl. He has blue hair and he's a boy. And I'm like, but he kind of looks like me, but like, but me is a girl. That's the difference. You're you're not seeing it, right? They don't even have the ability to make people look different. They just color no, them a little bit differently. And, and they're like, ah, but see, green is different. Green is different from everyone else. We don't have a green guy yet. Well, and that's like some of the gins. Like, I, I'm like, am I staring at the exact same thing I've been staring at? Is there like 15 that look like this red there's guy four. with the two spikes coming off the top of the head? There's like, only four. There's a blue red and it's all color coded, right? Like they, they have no bad. design whatsoever. Like a guy drew a gin colored it four times. And then he drew two characters and colored them different ways. And he said, there's all the characters we need in this game. Fucking awful. And you know what? That works. So if, if people are funny or have different abilities or do stuff, but we never do like, what the fuck does Isaac do? What was his purpose? Yeah. Like, and that's like, I don't know. Tell me one defining characteristic. Yeah. So there's a game. And, and you're like, there's a game. They're courageous. And you're like, okay, which one? They're all courageous. So there's there's a segment in Red Letter Media's ripping of like uh, episode one, like the Phantom Menace. Uh, and it's tell me a character from Star Wars without describing what they look like or what do they do. Right. Yeah. And you get to like Han Solo and he's like, he's a, he's a rebel. He's a scoundrel right he's uh daring he's adventurous brave cool awesome it's like explain qui-gon Jin. yeah uh that is this game in a nutshell right like explain to me isaac he uh you can't do it right like it's just it it's they did they they're like this is it people love cloud because he's got spiky hair let's just make everyone look like cloud and he has a sword. Don't forget he needs to have a sword cuz swords are like clouds popular cuz he has spiky <sighs> hair and new sword. So it make works. spiky hair you use, use sword. I don't know anything about what's the one where all the fighters come from in like Smash? Oh, Fire Emblem. Like I don't know anything about Fire Emblem, but I imagine it's a similar experience. So maybe there's a market of people that just like spiky haired yes. blonde people with swords. Sword yes. boys. I get that. People a- love okay. that. And I'm gonna go off on a side tangent. I don't really, I hate, I don't really like anime because all the characters look the exact same. Yeah, it's, a, it's a, I get it's a style, but it's like yeah, but they all look the freaking same, and it's like, and they all do the exact same thing: spiky haired or long hair and sword. Repeat, uh, the- and they just repeat and ad nauseum. And there's like, there's just millions, of, millions of these characters that all are the exact same, uh, I- have the exact same build, exact same personalities, and you're like. I don't care. Like none of, none of this stuff is like interesting when there's so much of the same thing. Uh-huh. Like what makes Cloud interesting is because you kind of find out that he is kind of a broken person and he is kind of like this damaged person because he went through this Mako treatment and essentially had his brain, his mind wiped and somebody else's mind inserted in his. And you're like, that's cool. Uh, that's like there's something there. Uh, I think but I think you're I, missing the point. I think I think you could almost say that the reason that Cloud works is because that he hangs out with a red dog, a girl with big boobs, and a big black guy with gun on. You know what I mean? Like, they're all very distinct-looking characteristics. If Final Fantasy VII had 
Cloud, but then his best friend was Isaac, and then he had Felix, and he had uh, Sheba, and that was your party at one point, you would be like, this game fucking is terrible, because they all look the same. Yeah. Well, that's Final Fantasy XV. Like, they look the same. A bunch of guys very much black so. outfits Make, running around yeah, the, the 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 interesting the visual contrast that you need to like help with these older games very 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 underrated right the fact that you can't just have all the same looking character in your whole story right uh, i mean you, you went on a side tangent with i love dragon ball z i think dragon ball z was phenomenal i, I thought it was a great time don't don't like gohan and vegeta and goku and yamcha just kind of all look the same they wear orange. They have black hair. Yep. Right. And like I was like, you're right. They kind of except put Piccolo. He's green. Okay. Cool. Awesome. What's going on with that guy? And Krillin. He's short and bald. <laughs> then at one point they give him black hair. Oh no! All right, they do, don't they? Yeah. They basically just make him look like Gohan. <laughs> well, you know, for animation's sake, that's probably way cheaper. I guess. But like, I mean, they were fighting characters like Frieza and yeah. like uh, Dodoria. And, yeah, they, they, um, they look different. Zarbon, they like kind of look different. Like Zarbon looks looks similar to kind of Everyone all else. the everybody else. Yeah, but he's green and has green hair. Yeah, so but, like, and, and I guess it works, right? Like all the Ghostbusters kind of look the same. The Ninja Turtles were actually just the same guy with different color headbands. Yeah, but then but then again, their personalities shown through. So like, it's a mixture of both. You need to have. You know what? You need either one or the other, but both is perfect. You can either be very uniquely and different and diverse, but also like have different pers- or different personalities where it's a bunch of people that look yeah. similar and have different different things going on. You need a better entry point. Or you could have point. a mixture of both. You need yeah. a better entry point. Like the fact that they said, this game is fun. It doesn't have the super ass, super boring ass story from the first game, like the intro. And I was like, man, the story from the intro from the first game did suck. It was like a two hours of just nothing. You're running around and you're like, fuck, this sucks. Right. And I felt the exact same. Like, it is that not an exact repeat of what happens? Like, you get shipwrecked. Yeah. And then you run around on the stupid island looking for a ship. And you're like, is this not similar exactly what we just happened on the first game? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, like, it's, it's, these, it's like, it's copied and pasted. Like, I get it's it was a game made to make, make money reaching off tropes of other franchises. And it didn't dare do anything original. Yeah. And I, it, it, that's the thing that frustrated me the most is I wanted it to get interesting because, and you know, it kind of get does mm-hmm. with a flat Earth and the mm-hmm. world shrinking and alchemy like needs to be released or the world's gonna crumble. But also using the alchemies like could ha- like mankind could take it too far and become over like crazy with power and destroy the world. And it's like that's a fantastic d- world they developed. But then you don't do anything with it. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I, I don't know. I just so that, like I don't know if we accomplished anything just talking just now, but I feel like we did. You know, I feel, I like, feel like we need to vent, and this game yeah. kind of needed a capstone on it because we were very good in the first game talking. Like almost maybe we liked playing the game, and we so much so that we actually convinced ourselves to play the second game. Guess what? This series, it's not the best. Like coming back and revisiting it, it's it's a big skip. Like honestly, I. I would say now, after playing an hour of the second game, I'm like, just pass. Pass, pass, pass. If you're a kid and you have unlimited time and, you know, you find your dad's Game Boy and he has these games. I also bought physical copies of this game, so I kind of felt like I was doing myself a disservice and wasting $40 if we didn't play this game. So now I can, like, cross that one off the to-do list. Uh, But, like, there's definitely a market for it and somebody's going to fall into this game and, like, love it. And I understand why you would love it. Uh, Just, it is a flawed experience right so uh criticisms you know i don't know grinding nonsense uh the the we already already bitched about it the fact that lash is a spell and it happened in the second game where i ended up like almost at the end of the game and they're like oh you don't have carry you have to go see your mom and get carry so i'm like running back across the world getting the spell coming back okay cool you can do it once game this game Within the first hour, I had already missed a magical spell that I needed. And I was like, no, I don't know if I can do it. Like, ah. yeah. Yeah. If, no, if I need it's... a strategy guide to have fun playing your game, you made a bad game, right? Yeah. Well, and it's open worlds are a good thing mm-hmm. and exploration is a good thing, mm-hmm. but mixed with monotonous grinding, um, very little rewards for playing battles out. 
and it's just like oh it, do i do i waste hours of my life just wandering around trying to do this the honest way or do i just need a streamlined experience and yeah. you're like you just need a streamlined experience because they just yeah it's I think they were so focused on content they weren't worried they weren't focused on you know quality well and this and game they, looks quality this game looks good it's just not an interesting looking game right uh so like i'm gonna tie this kind of into a praise the world is fun the game is kind of fun, right? Uh, not enough for me to invest 31 hours of my life. But if you had a strategy guide and you really wanted to play an RPG that has super intricate dozzle, uh, puzzles that, you know, get kind of hard apparently towards the end of the game, this could be the fun game for you, right? Like interesting character builds and like different strategies you can implement. But you have to kind of almost have a list of strategies and like put these gins on this on Isaac to have them like do these spells and that'll help Garrett like be overpowered, you know, like. I don't care. I don't know how to find that stuff. I don't want things at this point in my life. So uh, it is a fun experience. I can understand why someone would like playing this game, right? Like if you said, I love Golden Sun, I'd be like, yeah, it makes sense, I suppose, right? Uh, even less so than like Final Fantasy VIII. Like, I love Final Fantasy VIII. And I'm like, you haven't played better games, have you? At least I'd be like, I could. I, I, I've also asked those, that person, is Final Fantasy VIII your first Final Fantasy game? Mm -hmm. And nine times out of the ten, they're like, no, Final Fantasy VII was my favorite, or first. This one was my second. And you're like, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That explains things. Yeah, right. So it, I don't even think it's that bad. Like, I, I wouldn't put this in a worse games list. It's just not for me, right? Uh, I think if you like the RPGs, and obviously that's a very popular market, and that's a big subsection of the internet video game culture, and cool, awesome. I don't think it's for me at this point in my life, so I'm probably not yeah. going to play it now. I'm having a hell of a fun time playing Pokemon, right? And I'm kind of oh, looking yeah. forward to playing maybe like a Mario and R Mario RPG. So I think I just need like simpler RPGs to have fun with, right? Uh, and it's just, I don't know. At this point in my life, it's, it's not for me. And that's just what I'll say. But I'm not going to harshly yep. think less of you. Versus if, again, like we said, if, if someone says, I love Final Fantasy VIII, me and Tyson are both like, I'm judging you negatively for this so uh do you have yes. any final praise before we kind of move on yeah well i think yeah this game is just not really for me it doesn't doesn't scratch that itch for me but if it does for you like if you like jrpgs or you love like the little anime world that they kind of create it's very it's it's a, a unique experience yeah and i think that if you're one of those people that loves rpgs but your favorite part of our, our most rpgs is like the actual fighting mechanics and do, and, and learning all the intricacies of what interacts with what. Yeah. And if that just tickles your fancy, this game will be right up your alley. I'm not really a systems guy. Um, but if you you love uh, game systems, this is, this is a really in-depth one. Yeah. Kind of a cool little world. Um, tons of exploration. You, it would I would like a little bit more streamlined with more like dot to dot. Where should I go? Because I like to speed run my games. This isn't a game made for the speed mm -hmm. running m frame of mind. This is a game for it. You're not your 31 hours is laughable. You're going to be spending 60 or 90 hours just running around, talking to everybody, exploring, learning different things or trying different area or going to different spots. That's the, what this game is for. Yeah. I just um I don't have that kind of time in the world and maybe a past me would have really loved this franchise but where where I'm at currently I'm just I don't got time for that. It's That's why I like, you know, the difference between a Street Fighter or a fighting game where you need to know a character like button inputs and you need to know character stats and you need to know moves versus a beat em up ranges that's yeah. just a button masher, right? Like playing Shredder's Revenge. I beat that game twice. It was fun. I only had to press the A button and maybe jump periodically, right? Not super complicated. Whereas, or if you're in Tyson's case, just smash them together. Or, you know what I mean? But like, but there are people that like, like for me, fighting games seems like a great barrier for me to pick up a Mortal Kombat game to be like, I got to learn button combos and like try different characters. It does seem like a bit of a entry gateway where I'm like, I don't know if I'm willing to put in that time and effort. Whereas a beat em up, I could pick up Shredder's Revenge and say, okay, da -da 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 -da, game over, right? Oh, okay, C cool, right? So I think I'm just more of that, like that more of a little bit of a simple mindset and I'm not interested in diving into those games at this point in my life, especially like new experience. Uh, and I don't think one's worse than the other, right? And, but this no, is definitely no. the Street Fighter, the complicated, very complicated input system, right? Uh, very challenging. Whereas 
Pokemon is just the button masher. So that's yeah. kind of like it, that's a, that's yeah. and like a good fighting game will allow anyone to kind of pick up and just play, but allow the people the, the experts want to like really dive in and sink their teeth into. And, and Pokemon, I think, does that really really well. But you're right, like Pokemon's so flexible that you can just. I'm going to pick the Pokemon that I like, or I'm going to pick all the, like, I'm just going to make a random challenge and only do use this one Pokemon. It's like, there's cool things out there. We could just do that stuff. But then there's also like the, Hey, if you want to learn about EV training and how to like properly breed Pokemon, it's like, there is that other side of things. So, um, but, and golden sun's very much on the, like, Hey, no, you're, you need to know all this stuff and you need to figure out these systems and you need to know how all these gin interact and need to be comfortable spending multiple hours messing things around and flopping through things. Um, and just actually like, uh, messing with the game and spending time in menus. Whereas I just want to play the game That's... and I just want to be running around yeah. and maybe mashing a when I'm in a menu. There you go. So, uh, Whew, that was an experience. There we go. We talked like an hour. That's that's fine. I'm sure this, in theory, is a fine podcast. I mean, probably yeah. more of a fan if you're a fan of us, less so if you're a fan of Golden Sun, because then we just destroyed your favorite franchise. I'm sorry. And are you buying it? So we w- would you have played through the whole game if you got to play through Isaac's party from the beginning? Probably. Yeah, I think so, because I would have been a little bit more intrigued to by the like what these characters are doing and like if we were still chasing i also kind of wanted to know the conclusion to this story of this game that i've been trying to play for like over 20 years of my life so this was kind of like that ah that's what golden sun means this is dumb yeah right yeah similar like final fantasy 8 yes yeah very much so like there's like this you know i've always wanted to play this game these are like um I think it's called video game confessions where like, like I, there's a game that I love or a game that I think I like, but I've never played all the way through. Okay. This was one of those games and you're like, now that I've played all the way through, I can honestly say that, yeah, you know what? Maybe I leave golden sun off my GBA list. Uh, yes, very much. So cool. So with that, uh, I think that kind of wraps up everything about cultural significance and then we'll get out of here guys. We'll get back to an X-Men movies. And play Pokemon. Yay! So cultural significance. So in this section, we look at game tropes, marketing tactics, interesting stories. Oh, I didn't... See, this was like an old series of notes, because I think I say something different. Uh, I talk about how this game relates to other examples. Uh, as alluded to in our last podcast. Our last podcast. I think the first, the last golden sign, that is. Uh, the jinn are a major part of this game. They come from Arabic folklore, also known as genies. They are magical creatures that grant wishes, but they can also be quite problematic. And rather than just give you a history lesson and talk about some of the greatest examples in pop culture, let's let Tyson have some fun today. He's going to play a game. That's the only reason we stick around to the end of these podcasts, because we love hearing Tyson play a fun, fun game. So, uh, we didn't have a fun game in the last one. Uh, So let's have... uh, Oh, so we didn't have fun playing this game due to false advertising. So let's have fun at the end of our podcast. So a Gin Battle Royale. So I took eight of the most popular slash well-known examples from modern pop culture, put them in a tournament against each other, and Tyson S now is tasked with determining who's the greatest Gin of all time. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. So we got a number one eight matchup. In fact, there's a play-in game. So even to get in this tournament, Norm, the genie from the Fairly Odd Parents, voiced by Norm MacDonald, has to go up against the fire spirit Ifrit from Final Fantasy games. So, Norm the Genie from Fairly Odd Parents versus Ifrit from Final Fantasy. Who's getting into the play-in spot? Um, so now it's like I just want to clarify some rules. Is this so this is the greatest genie of all time? Yes. Um, I'm not going by power level. I'm going to go by most like iconic. Okay, all right. So um, Ifrit apparently is in Arabic lore. Ifrit is a very well-known fire jinn if you're wondering why he's on this list. So technically cool. the gin category, that's... Ifrit hits that category. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, I didn't even know that that like, that's maybe my just naivete, but also like, I mean, I love Norm McDonald, so I'm going to go with Norm from fairly on parents. <laughs> that's fair. Okay. Not every, yeah, not every final fantasy character has to be in here. Okay, all right. So then, uh, now Norm, the genie got in as an eight seed. He has to go up against the genie from Aladdin. 
and he's our number one seed in this tournament. So of those, who is the better Jin? Ah, dang. See, I, you know what? I think I gotta go with like Genie from Aladdin. Yeah. You just like you just have to. Like I love Norm from like and Norm. Uh, like I love Norm Macdonald, and it's hilarious that like Norm is Norm the. Uh, genie from Fairly Odd Parents, which is like I I love yeah. that. I love writers sometimes, but I you got to go with Genie. Like Robin Williams just absolutely crushes it. Um, I think for like the longest time, uh, everybody was just like, oh no, this it was, is what this is the knew. Robin Williams one. This is the Dan Castellaneta version from the TV show or the second movie. Oh okay. Well, you know what? It's not as good as Robin Williams, but. Yeah, it's it's okay. pretty all right. Just I'll, kidding. T- I'll take the Dan Castle and Netta one. Just kidding. It was Robin Williams. All right. So then we're going to go to our... Let's stay in the top bracket. We'll find out who's going to the, the semifinals here. Uh, we we got Wishmaster from the Wishmaster series versus Barbara Eden from I Dream of Genie. Oh, okay. Um, I've never seen the Wishmaster movies. Hmm. Or maybe I have, but that it's been too many decades. Um... So I think I got to go with Barbara Eden on this one because, I mean, I remember having a small crush on her when I used to watch those rerun runs as a, as a young young kid and be like, hmm, <laughs> like this, this is this is a strange feeling I'm feeling. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah he, but. He always, you always remember your your first genie. In my mind, she looks very similar to like Samantha from B. Oh, yeah. She's like. Basically from, yeah. Just, from, OK. It was always, it was always like Samantha from Bewitched or. Um, yeah. I think it's Genie from It is I Genie. Dream of Genie. But I gave you yeah. extra because I was like, Genie from I Dream of Genie. And then she yeah. can't go up against Genie from Aladdin. That's silly. All right. So yeah. we got Barbara yeah. Eden. Barbara Eden. Uh, in her sexy little outfit versus a hilarious performance by either Dan Class Lynette or Robin Williams Genie. Oh, boy. All right. Uh, into the number. Let's let's go to a different play-in game. So we're now in the 3-6 seed. So we have from the 6 seed, we have Kazam, which is Shaq from the movie Kazam. Or Genie from the Yu-Gi-Oh card. You know the one. The green guy coming out of the lamp. So which of those is the better Genie? <laughs> uh, I, I really I want to kind of root for the Yu-Gi-Oh card here. Because, I mean, that's just awesome. But I think I got to go uh, Kazam. I got to go with that. Like, come on. It's Shaq as Kazam. That's hilarious. Nice. This is... So I think it Lu might Jin, also just the have... mystical genie of the lamp. Four stars. That's the phone. Eight thousand eight hundred attack. Or eighteen hundred attack. Just gonna... If I would have been able to remember the name off the top of my head, okay. I would have probably went with Le, uh, the Le Jin. Yeah, but you know you so. had like six of them in your like with your Yu Gi Oh cards and you're like, Why do I even have this guy? He sucks. Okay, so Kazam. Because so he's Shaq. a four star and he's eighteen hundred. <laughs> you has gotta build up that that lower part of your deck, man. I guess. Crazy. Alright. I guess. So, but you're only allowed three, I think. Yes. But <laughs> sorry. So who's who's uh, Shaq going up against? All right. So Shaq gets in in the play round, and we're like, awesome, cool. He's going up against the number three seed, Mr. Popo from Dragon Ball Z. Um, this may be just uh, DBZ abridged, but I have to go with Mr. Popo because <laughs> Mr. Popo and Dragon Ball Z abridged is hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, whatever they did um, with this character was like exactly what they should have done. So it was brilliant. There's still some jokes where I just laugh. Yeah, and I was like, I've seen this probably the whole run three times, and it's like I still, I still chuckle. Yeah. All right. Awesome. So Mr. Popo goes on. Uh, we've only seen one. Oh, I guess I Dream a Genie four set was or four seed was five seed was kind of the upset. All right. So let's see if we can get another upset here. So the number two seed is Genie from the Ducktales movie versus Taj. From Diddy Kong Racing. So he's like the elephant. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. You know what? It's, uh, I don't even remember the genie from the DuckTales movie. I have now, That's... over the last three weeks, tried to watch the DuckTales movie. I still have like 45 minutes left to go. Like, I can only watch it for upwards of like two to four minutes. And then I was like, Huey, Dewey, and Louie's voice upset me so much. I just turn it off. But I just remember that watching that movie so much as a child. I'm like, I want to see the weird mountain of like gold and like there's like an evil castle. Oh, the animation's incredible. Yeah. It's just but some of the voice performances are just grating. Mm-hmm. And I get like they're it's a ca- cartoon character and that's the voice, but I always found listening to Donald Duck super hard to listen to as a kid. Um but 
one of my favorite N64 games is Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Racing. Donkey Kong Racing, sorry. Now I'm showing how bad I am. Um, but I gotta go with Taj on this one, because that guy, he was a joy. All right. I- and you know what? I gotta go with Taj. Uh, this is for you. I'm not gonna do a culturally insensitive impersonation of Taj there. So, all right. So yeah, Taj moves no. on. So we're gonna go. Uh, let's play that out. So Mr. Popo versus Taj from Donkey Diddy Kong Racing. Uh, much as I love Taj, I still gotta go with Mr. Popo. Yeah, like right. he is that performance that they tapped into. And in, if you haven't seen it, Do- uh, Dragon Ball Ball Z abridged. It's just. Just, Spot just on. watch Spot it. Spot on. All right. It's and now, amazing. Uh, uh, Robin Williams versus Barbara Eden. What's what's happening up top? Are we going to see uh, who's playing Mr. Popo in the finals? Um, You know, I I do love me some Barbara Eden, but I I, it, I just can't. Yeah. I, I just, I just, I feel so, I would feel so bad. Um, Even Dan Casanello. Like, I always, I love the Aladdin um, animated series. Like, We'd run home after school and hope that we could catch the last like twenty minutes or fifteen minutes of an Aladdin episode. Luckily, a friend down the road would sometimes record them on like a, an old VHS tape, and it'd just be like, "I'm so happy you did this." Yeah, <laughs> that is very solid. All right, okay, that's super. So then that leaves the ultimate battle. We've got Genie from the Lamp versus Mister Popo from Kami's Tower, head to head. Who is the greatest Jin of all time? Um. Well, the only knock against Mr. Popo is I don't really think of him as a genie. Okay. All right. But when I think of genie from Aladdin, like he's got the whole lamp and everything. Think of a I don't know if Mr. Mr. Popo even has a lamp. I feel like that should kind of come with it. Okay. And it's like, if we're looking for the greatest gin of all time, they kind of need to have an iconic lamp. So I think it's just the lamp itself. Okay. And, and kind of its iconicness that edges Genie from Aladdin over Mr. Popo. Solid, solid, solid. Cool. So with that, that means Genie, I kind of figured he'd probably be the best Genie, is the best Genie. Hooray. And now we never have to talk about Golden Sun ever again. Because it wasn't one of the worst games I ever played. It was just an experience. At some point, it's going to oh. come up in our tiers list. Yeah, I was going to say, it's going to come up one more time. Yeah. But, but. And I think after giving it a little bit of time to simmer, it may not fall so far um i think the first one's not going to fall so far but i think the second one might fall quite far put them together and i would knock it down like one or two pegs but it's just more of like just because i'm not into that experience at my point in my life i do think for what it is technically yeah they made a pretty great game they have a pretty complicated story it's an intricate system kudos to them they just didn't present like the presentation is just terrible right yeah yeah Yeah, like if you would have made one of your characters a a, a yeti i probably would have been like i'm in i like this yeti guy i can get behind it but no you made a, another blonde boy with a sword okay awesome cool so with that yeah we're gonna wrap this up and go from there i think leave it bye see you in two weeks for x-men yep see you in two weeks okay bye